Welcome back to The Look and Sound of Leadership, an ongoing series of executive coaching tips designed to help you be perceived in the workplace the way you want to be perceived. I'm Tom Henschel, your executive coach, and today we're talking about performing like a TED Talker. Caroline in London wanted to know what to do with her body. Caroline was one of eight division heads who would speak at the company's annual global management meeting. The CEO told them they would each talk for 18 minutes just like a TED Talk. And she said she wanted each talk to be as riveting as an actual TED Talk. The division heads asked for help and got paired up with me. Eventually, I would work with each of them individually, but this was our 90-minute group kickoff call. We had discussed how to rehearse, how to build ideas while rehearsing, and whether or not to memorize. By the way, that conversation that I'm referencing is the episode called Prepping Like a TED Talker. It was at the end of that conversation that Caroline, admittedly nervous about delivering any speech at all, asked how they could rehearse their bodies. I asked what she meant. And she said, well, I just can't imagine walking onto that stage and looking out at all those people, she said. I'm not worried about what I'm going to say. I can figure that out. But what am I going to actually do with myself? That's, that is a yawning black chasm to me. Thinking I might have an idea to help, I asked, where's the meeting happening? Vegas, said Marissa from Cupertino. Is it there every year, I asked? Do you know what it's going to look like? Adam in Phoenix said, we had it there two years ago. It's massive, Tom, said Caroline. The stage is enormous. Huge screens hanging behind you like a world summit. It is a world summit, said Chloe from Montreal. Caroline, I said, if you can picture all that, then it doesn't have to be a black chasm. It doesn't have to be scary. Easy for you to say, she said. We can work on this, I said, just the two of us. I think visualizing the event will help you. Wouldn't it help us too, asked Kurt from Chicago. Oh, of course, I said. Do you all want the crash course on visualization? They were energetic with their yes. I said, the benefit of visualization is that you totally trick your brain. Here's why. When we're in a new situation, our brains have to process more information than in a familiar situation, like when you drive somewhere for the first time. Doing new things takes up bandwidth in our brains. But after that first time, you need less bandwidth to do the same thing. Well, when you visualize an event before it happens, then when it really does happen, you trick the brain into thinking it's not the first time. You gain brain capacity and you quiet the fear. I went on asking, will you have a chance to rehearse in the real space? We have in the past, said Tracy from Hong Kong. Not much time, maybe an hour for all of us, but we'll get to see the space. Tracy was the most experienced presenter of the group. I said, if you can, get the people there to make the space real for you. Ask them to turn on the real lights they'll be using, the real sound, the real microphone, the real clicker. Get it as real as it can be. Ask for help, even if the folks in the venue are grumpy. It's their job. They'll get over it. Besides, it's your butts out there. Anything that'll make things seem more familiar on the day increases your brain's capacity. And what do we use that capacity for, asked Chloe. People, for one thing, I said. Can I do a quick visualization with you? They said, sure. Okay, I said. Picture yourself. You're at rehearsal. It's the day before the event. You're standing on the stage. Oh, God, groaned Caroline. <laughs> the others laughed. All the lights are on, I continued. And they are bright. They're blinding. Even when you squint... You can barely make out the carpet down there where the tables are going to be tomorrow. And now, picture those tables set up all around the floor. Each one has a linen cloth over it. And there are chairs around every table. And in every chair is a person. For example, right down front, picture Deborah, I said, naming their CEO. Now, Picture your boss over there in another chair. Oh, and look, there's your boss's boss. And oh, picture your peers, the ones you like and the ones you don't. And 
Hey, over there, look, it's your direct reports. Is anyone else getting the willies? whispered Caroline. Actually, I liked it, Kurt said quietly. I don't know why, but that calmed me down. Well, that's what visualization does, I said. Marissa said, An old boss of mine taught me a visualization that I use all the time. It's a little different because it's about a feeling. What I picture is me waking up in bed on the morning of the event, whatever the event is, and I picture my waking feeling as this happiness, this certainty that today is going to be a fantastic day. Everything about the day is going to go well. I visualize that day after day after day after day, and then on the day, that's pretty much how I feel. I am so happy. Sounds great, said Adam. I wonder sometimes if I'm doing the opposite, said Tracy. The opposite of what, I asked. The opposite of visualizing, she answered. When I've got a big event, it's like I'm blind to anything that isn't about the presentation. I am laser focused. Like if the assistants are losing their minds backstage, it's got nothing to do with me. Even when something does have to do with me, it can't shake my focus. The only thing in my sights is that performance. I asked, and that's the opposite of visualization because because it's like I have these giant blinders on. I don't see anything if I don't want to see it. Adam laughed. Actually, that's like visualization on steroids. It's like game day, said Kurt. There are no distractions on game day. Chloe said, if we're talking about bodies, here's what I'd like to know. When do I start talking? It's a long walk to get out there and Everyone can see you the whole time. Do I start talking while I'm walking? Marissa laughed, saying, Has anyone noticed that everyone giving a TED Talk starts stock still, already in place? I always wonder, what was happening two minutes before? Was it a shit show? The group laughed. What about us, Tom? asked Kurt. Do we just walk out silently to some magic spot and start talking? I said, If the venue is that big... Somebody will have figured that out, and they will tell you what to do. But look, no matter what they tell you to do, you're going to follow the same rule you follow when you're standing in front of a conference room. And which rule is that? asked Chloe. Until you're in focus, don't talk. Get in focus. Ooh, I like the sound of that, said Caroline. What does it mean? What does in focus mean, I asked? Well, focus starts with you. To keep me listening to you, you need to be focused in your mind and focused in your body. They go together. So if you're up there and your body's swaying or you're fidgeting or you're doing a little box step or you can't look at us, you do not appear focused. And that makes it harder for me to stay tuned into you. But it can be really distracting up there, said Tracy. As it can be in front of a boardroom, I said. It always comes down to the same thing. It has to be about the people. You have to look at them. You have to talk with them. You have to connect with them. That's what gets you in focus. But there are so many more of them, said Caroline. <laughs> it's true, I said. But that's no reason not to talk to them. You know how to talk to people, so talk to the people in the room. Don't create artificial behavior. There was silence. Then Marissa said, That same boss who gave me the wake-up feeling, she did what you're talking about, Tom. We had these enormous global meetings, and in those days the technology was really primitive. But she always sounded just like herself. She sounded the same as she sounded in her staff meetings and like she sounded on the phone with her kids. She was amazingly natural in every setting. Caroline spoke. So, are you saying I shouldn't be thinking about my gestures? Which I was, everybody. I confess, I was thinking about my gestures. <laughs> I laughed, saying, you know, unless you're an athlete or a dancer who's used to programming your body, no, no, I would not encourage you to 
isolate parts of your body or script out actions. Oh, I want to gesture like this about that. Or, oh, on this slide, I'm going to look over there. You know, I think it's better to trust your body is going to act naturally. <laughs> well, I can act naturally and hyperventilate, Tom, said Caroline to more laughs. She continued, no, I'm serious. When you say natural behavior, that gives me a broad brush to paint with. How am I supposed to know what's going to be most effective? How about if I share a secret with you, I asked. I hope it's juicy, quipped Kurt. Here's how I get in focus, I said. When I'm speaking, I imagine that I have a delicious secret. What is it? It's whatever I'm going to talk about. And I make sure I love my secret. It is wondrous, and I can't wait to share it with you because you're going to love it too. Marissa said, it's like imagining the best day ever. Visualization, said Adam. So wait, said Caroline. I wanted to talk about how to rehearse my body, and you're telling me it's all in my head? <laughs> I laughed, but she was right. Focus in your mind creates focus in your body. Visualization rockets you towards the look and sound of leadership. Okay, so I've got a question for you. Can you picture yourself getting up in front of a room, any room, it doesn't matter, a staff meeting maybe, a training maybe, it doesn't matter, but there you are, you're in front of these people. Can you picture yourself stopping and looking at people before you start speaking? Can you picture yourself looking at people and seeing the people? I think people start talking way before they're ready. People jump into speaking as if it's going to hurt, so they better get it over with, or at least get it started, you know? Well, you know, when you do that, you don't ask for our attention. So it's harder for us to give you our attention. So we're going to be restless sooner. And look, I'm not talking about a big, long, awkward silence full of lingering close-ups. I'm just saying, start on them. Look at them, because it's really about them. If you can't get your ideas from your head into their head, what good was it? So start with them. They're the customers. I think being in focus happens when they see you and you see them. That's when you start talking. And my, oh my, visualization helps. I mean, look, you know, we see people do this in the movies all the time. You know, uh, here's the one that leaps to my mind is Kate Blanchett. When she was really young, it was the first movie I ever saw her in. It was called Elizabeth. She was playing the young girl just as she was becoming Queen Elizabeth I, the daughter of Henry VIII. There is a scene that I remember. She is practicing in a mirror of something really important that she has to say, and she's rehearsing it over and over and over. We see people do this in the movies, right? This is something familiar. That person practicing in the mirror that person is visualizing. Now, I'm not a mirror guy. I cannot visualize in a mirror. But whether you use a mirror or don't use a mirror, what's important is you are thinking about the event. Take time. Picture it. Get specific. Listen, you can imagine the event from as early as you want, like getting off the elevator or getting out of your car, getting up in the morning. You can imagine it then all the way through to the end, all the way until you finally get to go to the bathroom, finally. You know, it's like you can imagine a ton. There's lots to imagine, and every detail that you imagine creates familiarity on the day. And familiarity creates comfort and ease. And oh, those are good things to have on game day. So visualize. It's worth your time. You know, it's about this time in the podcast that I usually say, hey, if this episode interests you, some others you could listen to are, well, I could list 50 for this one. <laughs> the very first gig that I ever had as a consultant, as my career was transitioning from actor to consultant, the very first thing I ever did was I was a presentation skills trainer. And that makes sense, right? You know, I'd been directing in theater and been myself an actor. Well, that was not a big leap for me. So given that background, you know, it makes sense that I've written, I would have written a whole lot of these tips about things related to presentation skills, right? Things like, I talk too fast, or managing nervousness, or making stories soar. Well, I've written so many skills 
tips about presentation skills, it has its own category in the archive. The archive is on the Essential Communications website, essentialcom.com, essentialcom with two M's, dot com, coaching tips. They're all there, and you can sort them so you can only see the ones related to presentation skills or managing up or managing yourself. Anyway, help yourself. Essential Communications is the name of the company, essentialcom.com, coaching tips. This month, thanks to Jonathan Wilson 1 and I'm going to say it as CamArt73, who each left reviews in iTunes. CamArt73, yours just made me laugh out loud. And Jonathan Wilson 1, I am honored for what you said. Thank you both. And by the way, very well written, both of you. Nice use of language. That was great to read. Speaking of great to read, after I read those reviews, I wondered if there's other places that I should be looking for your feedback and for being in touch with you. You know, I never look anywhere but iTunes just because I've never thought to. If there's someplace else that you are posting about this podcast, if there's someplace else I should look, would you let me know? I would love to see what you write, and I'd love to be in touch with you. I am the contact button on the Essential Communications website. It's been fun talking to some of you recently about coaching. Whoa, you folks are great. Until next time, I'm Tom Henschel. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>